This is what we're making today. It's a physics platformer. It's one of those games where you jump around with your character. Uh, there are moving platforms, you overcome all sorts of obstacles and enemies, and quite often you die. Okay, let's start by going to clockworkchili.com slash way. And here I'm going to create a blank new project called physics platformer. We get a bunch of files to start with and a nice empty scene that we're going to fill with very interesting stuff by clicking here this uh, orange icon at the top that says repo browser. This uh, basically lets us browse a list of pre-made objects and initially we're going to be using these pre-made objects but I'm also going to show you briefly how they're made so you can change absolutely everything about them. So these objects um, let me let me show you. Let, let's select these physics objects uh, repository and let's get the main character and drag it into the scene here. This is going to add a bunch of uh, images and scripts to our project. So if I click here and go back to my folder view, I can see that in fact we have added Wake Physics, which is the physics engine. We have added a. Uh, uh, mm, a folder with that's called platformer scripts and it contains a bunch of scripts that control the behavior of this character and potentially other objects that we will be adding later uh, and also if i go back to the root uh, it's got this uh, inora folder inora is the name of our main character for some reason and this contains a bunch of sprite sheets for the crouching climbing running animations that we are going to be using now so going back to the repository, uh, I'm going to add a ground object to the scene, uh, this ground to object. Now, if I, if I click play, I can already move around with the keyboard, with the arrow keys, and I can jump with the space bar. And it's already looking quite interesting. It's going to look even more interesting when I duplicate this ground object by clicking this button up here and I make another one and then I have to jump on it. So as you can see, I can move around and the camera tracks my character. This is contained in the code for this character. So to reiterate this character, these ground objects are made of magic. They're made of code. It's code that we have downloaded when we have dragged these objects into the scene from the repository. And if we go to our folder view, we can uh, edit that code, for example, going into the platformer scripts and um, see, for example, this walkable surface file. Well, we can edit it and we can change everything about walkable surfaces. It's all plain JavaScript. Um, also, some of these things are um, behaviors. So that means that they expose some properties that you can change without actually having to change the code. For example, let's uh, see one of these ground objects. So let's go to the behaviors tab here. Uh, as you can see, it's, a, it's got a physics object behavior. It's also got a walkable surface behavior. Now the walkable surface behavior itself has also got some uh, properties that have been exposed in from this file here, from walk, the walkable surface file They have been um, uh, exposed surface and top collision only so that you can change them more easily from this editor uh, but if you want if you prefer to edit code you can change them from here as well okay so let's go ahead and add some more uh, interesting things to the scene going back to our physics objects repository we have uh, a ladder that will let us climb from this platform to um, another platform up here actually let's use a different type uh, of ground up here okay now as you can see the draw order is a bit um, is a bit wrong i want the ladder to be um, in front of the ground it doesn't show in front of the ground uh, because it was um, it, it, it's set to be on a different layer by default so let's see the ground is on layer two you, you can see in the sprites tab the ladder is on layer 5. Let's move that to layer 2. Now they're on the same layer, I can reorder them by dragging them around in this list of objects. Okay, so now when I press play, I should be able to go here and climb 
Once again, the character is behind everything. That's not good. Now, let's actually change the layer for the character to level 1 to ensure that it's always in front of everything. So now that should be much better. And while we're here, let's also add some background to it because it's all black and sad. Let's make it less sad. So background pictures repository. I want to use this blurry background uh, object. Okay, I'm going to uh, put it here, put it on layer 20, which means behind all of these other objects. Let's make it bigger still. And let's see what happens now when I, let's position it correctly. Let's see what happens when I run the game. Okay, I have a nice background now. However, uh, it's a bit weird for a couple of reasons. Okay, first of all, uh, I can resize the window. I can show more of the level, more of the background. Eventually, I'm also going to show some black areas here because the background doesn't cover everything. Uh, so let's address this problem first by going to um, the scene properties here. In the settings tab, we use a constant fixed resolution here. Uh, I set the same value for min screen size and max screen size. And that tells Wade to always use this same uh, fixed predefined area to draw the game. That means that when I run it now, <clears throat> I can um, resize the window all I want. The area of the game that is shown on the screen is always the same. Now, the background needs positioning a little bit better. Uh, so it covers the left edge and it covers the bottom bit as well. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll just just make it bigger still. So I think now the background covers everything and I can resize the window all I want and I'm not revealing any more parts of the of the level which is very desirable for this type of game. Okay so um, now the other problem with the background is that it moves with everything else. Uh, I would like it to have some sort of parallax effect, you know, so it moves a little bit less than everything else, so it feels like it's in the back. Uh, and we can go again to scene properties, this time we go into the layer, in the, into the layers tab. Uh, layer 20 is the one that contains the background. If you hover your mouse over translate here, it will say how much the sprites on this layer move when the camera moves. And instead of 1, let's try 25. That means that when the camera moves, the background is going to move much less compared to all the other teams that are in the scene. So you can see it better in the editor, perhaps. Yeah? If I move the camera by right-clicking and dragging, you can see that the background moves at a different rate to, um, to everything else. So um, let's continue this game by uh, adding some more interesting stuff from this um, repository. Uh, the uh, physics objects repository contains a moving platform, for example, that I want to add here to my scene. And let's see what that does. So when I get here, yeah, that's moving. Where is it going? Yeah, it's coming back. It's coming back eventually. It's going very slowly. And yes, I can jump onto it. Okay, that's cool. Uh, but uh, I want it to move quicker. So let's have a look in the behavior tab. Uh, in the behavior tab, luckily, the, there is a moving platform behavior where the speed has been exposed as a public property. So yeah, 150. So it moves three times as fast as before. Uh, which was really very slow. Um, and now let's see, I want to add some code to handle game over. So when I fall down, currently nothing happens. I would like to restart the level in that case. So let's see what we can do about that. This, um, this main character here has got some functions attached to it. In addition to all the behaviors that are attached to it, it's got some functions that contain other code. It's got an onUpdate function that, uh, as it says here, this function runs once per step. And there is an onAddToScene function that, it, that is executed once when the object is added to the scene. Now, these functions are already doing something. Yeah, you can see they're orange in this list of functions. 
which means that they contain code that does something. In this case, it is dealing with the camera bounds. It's setting the limits for the camera movement. You can see that when I run the game and move around, the camera tracks my character, follows me everywhere. But if I fall down, the camera doesn't fall down with me. It stops at some point. And that's all what this pre-existing code here is doing. I'm going to add something at the bottom here that says if um, this dot get position dot y is greater than 500, for example, yeah, then we're dead. Okay, uh, we want to call a function this dot die. This dot die does not exist, as you can see, it's not in our list of functions yet. We can add it by clicking this button here. Call it die. And when we die, we want to reload scene1.wsc, which is the, the current scene. Load scene, as you can see, you can pass it some parameters. The file name, which is the scene we want to load, okay? Whether you want a loading bar, I don't want a loading bar. Whether you want a callback, we do not want a callback. And whether we want to clear the scene before loading the new scene and yes we do want to do that so we set that to true okay so uh, now when we fall down we die we should be able to restart there we go we restarted exactly from the beginning uh, okay so with that out of the out of the way let's keep extending our level a bit more <clears throat> with uh, the moving platform we want to um, jump onto some other bit of ground. Uh, I'm adding this um, uh, object here. I could have cloned this, but it's, uh, yeah, it's the same. I've dragged it again from my repository. And from there, I will add a bouncy platform. Where is it going? Bouncy platform is here. This is a platform that makes you bounce, you guessed it, when you jump onto it. Uh, so let me also duplicate it. <clears throat> and put another one here and eventually we land on uh, another one of these or these let me duplicate that again okay let's see if we can make these jumps let's test our game uh, that was a good jump bounce bounce and here we are okay so what happens now well <clears throat> i think it's time to introduce an enemy so we have this awesome spider enemy here i'm going to drag it into my project and from here i'm going to move it onto my platform now this uh, this guy uh, now i don't want to complete the whole level before i see what the spider does so i am also temporarily going to move uh, my character somewhere more convenient like here so we can test this bit of the level okay you can see that the spider uh, well it is going somewhere <clears throat> and it's not sticking to the platform where is it going we could have a look at the functions that are attached to the spider and figure it out now uh, just for uh, you know just to be quick I'm going to tell you that uh, this is going to uh, this uh, end lock uh, position. End lock is a variable that luckily is, has been exposed um, in the properties of the object, see, in these pu public properties of the object. So we can edit these numbers to tell the spider where to go. So th the spider essentially goes there and then comes back. Yeah? So this is our start position. Um, <clears throat> let's see, does it appear to be on the ground? Yeah, more or less, but then again, I think the spider should probably be on, uh, on, la on layer one, so it appears to be above the ground. So let's say that that's our start position, <clears throat> and um, we want the same y coordinate for the end position, and in terms of x, um, you know, maybe maybe it should stop there. Let's use three thousand seven hundred as our 
end position. Yeah. Uh, let's do that. So now the spider walks towards us and we can avoid it and then it comes back. What's interesting is we can jump on it and kill it. And that's caused all sorts of graphical corruption because it hasn't been set up properly. Whoever did this, Stephen, I am looking at you, uh, you haven't set it up correctly, but we can fix it. So let's go to the sprites tab of the spider, the die animation. Let's make it active to see what it looks like. Actually, let's make it looping as well so we can see what it looks like. Totally wrong because the number of cells in the animation in the sprite sheet is not correct. It should have been uh, five by two. Okay, now it looks much more like it. Not looping, not active either. We want uh, the walk animation to be active initially. Okay, so when we do that and kill the spider, yes, it dies and we can uh, just walk over it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I've still got a couple of minutes, so I'm going to uh, quickly um, do something to end the level. Uh, let's add one last bit. Uh, where is it gone? Here. That um, is the end of the level, actually. Let's make it even better by adding a door that will take us to, um, to scene two, which will be level two of this game. So, uh, in these repositories, there is a Glitch repository. Glitch, if you don't know, is an amazing game that was available some time ago, and then they went bust and they released all their assets into the, uh, uh, into the public domain. So now we can use them. We can grab this door and uh, put it into the project and um, drag it out here. And Okay, so uh, quickly, let's rename it. Let's um, call it door. And let's edit the um, uh, on key down function, I would say, for this character. Um, to say, if we are in front of the door, when we press the, the up arrow, and we are in front of the door, let's go to level two. Okay, so on key down, this function is called when you press the key. As you can see, if you expand this, data.keyName contains the name of the key. So if data.keyName is up, okay, we want to load another scene, uh, scene2.wsc, uh, and again, no loading bar, or maybe yes, maybe we want a loading bar, but we do not, we certainly want to clear the scene first. Okay, so that's uh, that's what's going to happen, although scene 2 doesn't exist, so this is going to come up with, uh, with an error, uh, but we want to, uh, oh, actually now this is going to happen every time we press the up key, instead we just want to see if we are in front of the door by doing this get overlapping objects uh, and if uh, the overlapping objects uh, contain the door object so this is the javascript way of saying is the door object in the array called o okay then in that case we load this c okay otherwise we don't let's test that quickly so press up key nothing happens Ooh, I completely missed the jump there. Uh, press up key now, and yes, it comes up with an error. Unable to load JSON file scene2.wsc because the scene doesn't exist. Also, I appear to be behind the door because we are on the same layer, but just by dragging the object, I can sort that out. Uh, and finally, I think I want to uh, show you by going back to our folder view and in the root, and editing app.js, I want to show you that we can call wave.enable gamepads, and this amazingly lets us play the game with a gamepad. And there we go, it feels really, really nice. 
but there is going to be a little problem uh, because we have said that uh, when we press the up key we want to, uh, to do this thing to load the next scene instead let's copy this code and paste it here where it said on gamepad button down and here we go if data dot uh, button equals uh, three we do that same thing. Button 3, I believe, is uh, Y on the Xbox controller. So now when we run this, uh, we can go here. Oops. We can go here, open the door, and yes, I'm able to load JSON file. Actually, just to conclude this, let me create that JSON file, even though it's going to be an empty scene uh, initially, but I'm going to press here, create new file, um, scene 2. It's a scene file, so at least when we get to the end of the game, uh, let's reload scene one. Uh, when we get to the end of the game, at least uh, there's no error, there's just an empty scene, which isn't great, but you can expand on that. Okay, I think in 20 minutes we've achieved quite a lot. Uh, there's lots more you could add to this. It's super easy to add your own physics objects. It's all, like I said, it's all powered by a physics engine. So, you know, you just define some physics properties like does this object bounce, does this object roll? Uh, and then it just works. You don't have to write much code at all, really. So hopefully you've enjoyed making this game in 20 minutes. I hope to see you again for the next episode. Thanks for watching.